So in inner Melbourne, it's been uh, Yarra City Council last week and now Darwin uh, Council have voted to, to dump Australia Day. The, the federal government's response has been to strip the abilities of these councils to hold citizenship ceremonies, which is a, a real lip wristed response. Uh, another council, uh, Moreland, uh, inner city council came within uh, one vote and now uh, another council in Melbourne, this time in suburban Melbourne, uh, Banyol Council has announced that they're having a review uh, into their Australia Day celebrations. And despite the fact that 85% of Australians support Australia Day, they, these councils, that seems to be getting, it seems to be catching on. I mean, you know, what more councils are going to follow? Well, I, I think that it obviously isn't a true reflection of middle Australia or, or any normal Australians. You say that 85% uh, support keeping Australia Day on Australia Day uh, when Captain Cook discovered this great land. Uh, but there's obviously, uh, an, there's obviously an influx of Greens uh, members into these council groups and uh, with their Marxist ideology, they want to wipe clear uh, all of our proud history. Um, pretty much, I think, uh, for uh, because they believe in this concept of white guilt, that the white man is uh, is essentially you can blame him on every single failure. Um, and I think this whole white guilt uh, phenomenon is. Is, infiltra is in these uh, far left inner city councils, and I think that's why uh, we are having uh, this push to change Australia Day, uh, which is just awful. Oh, well, you can't actually say that uh, Captain Cook discovered Australia because, of course, Stan Grant has said that the, the Captain Cook statue in Sydney, he wants the uh, engravery uh, t taken off that says he discovered Australia because it's insulting to Indigenous civilization. So that's even another front that uh, this attack on Australia Day is taking. They're, they're now attacking you know, our statues and the, our cl uh, colonial leaders. Well, no one says, um, no, we acknowledge, Andrew Bolt said this perfectly, we acknowledge that it was Indigenous people in Australia, uh, but, we, but we say Captain Cook discovered Australia because he was the first man to circumnavigate, I believe, the Southern Hemisphere, discovered Australia and New Zealand and, and whatnot. That's, uh, that, that's what they mean by discovered Australia. It's, it's not to say that there weren't Indigenous people before then. It's like when people say that Christopher Columbus discovered America, yes, there were there were Indians there, but he was the first Westerner to discover America. Likewise with Marco Polo in China. No one's disputing the fact that there weren't any Chinese there, but they're just saying that he was the first, uh, I guess, Westerner to discover these uh, lands in the Far East and in, in the Deep South. So the the way that I think it's. Uh, Definitely literal, literalism from the far left, um, and they're just trying to undermine our values and institutions. Uh, I definitely think, I mean, Australia Day, in my opinion, uh, is the founding of modern Australia. Like, of course, nobody denies that there was an indigenous civilization before that, but the modern Australia, with all the uh, pro prosperity and freedoms we enjoy today, what it did start on uh, January 26, 1788. And I, I think that it's... Um, that Colonialism gets a bad rap, and I might get myself in trouble for saying this, but the standard of living in countries where the Brits have been, for instance, India, if you look at the life expectancy, since it's how it's gone up since colonial times, you look at Africa, South Africa, for instance, lifespans have doubled and tripled in some instances. There's hospitals, infrastructure, people can have a good standard of living. And um, to blame colonialism on the plight of uh, well, ethnic minorities to begin with is a bit silly um, because colonialism, although it has uh, had its abuses, uh, for instance, uh, uh, well, the Stalin generation, uh, it, it has uh, to a large part been beneficial for many uh, of these developing countries around the globe. 
Uh, and certainly did, uh, you know, colonial Australians, did they do some bad things? Uh, of course, you know, nobody, no historical figure is without it f it's, uh, their flaws, but overall they had a net positive contribution to modern Australia and, you know, basically, and you mentioned Andrew Bolt before, he said that we're going to have, at this rate, we're going to have to basically uh, disavow every uh, Prime Minister up until the White Australia policy was abolished. And, and also the other point that, that uh, Andrew made that was uh, quite valuable is that the poisoning of waterholes uh, and the smallpox blankets was just a, a, little, a myth made up by an Australian poet, and it had absolutely no historical groundings. And Bill Shorten found that in Parliament, and uh, he should know better, quite frankly. Uh, that was the first time I'd heard of those stories, and you know, if if they are being spread around, I mean, that's really malicious lies that you know isn't isn't contributing anything towards, you know, reconciliation or, you know, peaceful community cohesion? What it is contributing, though, is to is division, um, complete division. We need unity. We don't need division and we don't need this information being spread by the leader of the opposition. And that's why some uh, Indigenous uh, leaders have actually come out against these uh, inner city uh, councils in uh, in Melbourne at the moment uh, because they they don't actually have uh, many local indigenous people the the ones that do live there are, are middle class there's an excellent Alice Springs councillor Jacinta Price who said that you know this uh, changing of Australia Day does nothing to you know help uh, you know the problems that are going on in indigenous communities with um, you know d uh, domestic violence. Uh, for example, she said we need to stop with this virtue signalling and, you know, look at actual solutions. Well, these symbolic gestures, as you said, don't change the rates of alcoholism, domestic violence and incarceration in business communities. It's just posturing, gesturing and virtue signalling. Uh, and if we, if we are to get uh, reconciliation with our Indigenous people, uh, certainly changing the names or taking down monuments or changing Australia Day isn't the way to get there. Uh, and certainly they're taking a leaf out of what's going on in the United States at the moment with the taking down of all those uh, Confederate monuments because the, the left, they, they are being successful at getting these monuments taken down. And so... Uh, it's often said what happens in America comes here and uh, lo and behold the, the left are trying to do the same thing to Australia's history. Well, it, it's a plague, it's a plague of craziness. That's, that's what I'm calling it. Uh, these people in, in America, um, uh, I've, I described them in my article on the, uh, the ACL bombing as pretty much the modern day equivalent to the red shirts. Uh, they've got a far-left Marxist agenda and they want to rewrite history in a way that suits their ideology and their cause and uh, they, they don't really care about anything uh, but excelling their ideological Marxist cause. Oh, well, the, the positive thing is, is as I mentioned, 85% of Australians, based on a recent poll, support Australia Day. So it's the Australian people just need to, to make their voices heard that, you know, we don't want this. And it was interesting, Seven News in their vox pop on the street, like of all the people they asked were saying, this is, you know, ridiculous. What are they, what are they on about? We just need to, you know, get, get through to, you know, to have some sort of reform of these councils so this type of behaviour can't go on. And I, I believe that Malcolm Turnbull revoked licences to issue... Australian Day citizenship um, ceremonies at these councils, which is a good first step. Uh, we need to take a stand. But what I believe is that public opinion can change quite quickly because these, these far lefties have got a lot of influence in the Australian uh, Education Union and uh, they can uh, indoctrinate uh, children with propaganda. I, for, for instance, have been indoctrinated with uh, let's change Australia Day policy, let's uh, create another flag that doesn't have the Union Jack on there because it's a symbol of oppression. 
So this, this indoctrination is happening in schools, and before you know it, public opinion will change, much like it happened with same-sex marriage, just because of the indoctrination, propaganda, and um, constant uh, advertising and pressure by groups such as Get Up. Uh, I probably disagree with that. I mean, young people might be progressive on other social issues, but definitely when it comes to Australia Day and uh, you know pride in the nation, they they are still very firm supporters of that. Well, well, we can only um, hope for that, Tim, because if we start to lose um, pride in what makes us great, what makes us Australian. Uh, then we will be going downhill quite quickly. Uh, if we if we get divided by race, if we accept the doctrine of intersectionality and dividing everyone by race and class and religion, except the, in, instead of accepting everyone as Australians, uh, then then I do see Australia Day maybe changed in the future, come 20, 30 years time, when this doctrine of intersectionality and this Marxist doctrine takes hold of our institutions. I can see it changing. So we really need to make sure that what our youth are being taught is liberal, pro-democratic and pro-Australian and, and definitely none of this Marxist hoo-ha.